Luxury Restaurant, the Vineyard at Stockcross, just down the road from me. It's Daniel Galmich. Hello, James. Great Hello. to have her back on the show. <clears throat> yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. And of course, Fantastic. cooking French dish. So cooking French dish. On That's the menu correct. is what? On the menu is what? Filet yeah. of sea bass yeah. today, which we're going to uh, pan fry, okay. serve with uh, saute potatoes. We've got new potatoes. We're going to blanch yeah. a little bit and uh, put some uh, fennel in it to give some flavor to the water. And a sauce vierge. And a sauce vierge, which, which I'll is get all there. I know yeah. you want to get and that. And a pancetta. Uh, sea yeah. Yeah. So tell us about this sea bass. This is this is lime cod. This sea is lime cod sea bass, but uh, yeah. uh, we can buy. Uh, you can now buy some lovely farm sea bass. But the farm one uh, is smaller. Much smaller. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, equally good, actually, nowadays. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, why do you just put the little. Um, well, I just uh, in there? so it cook a little bit faster. Right. And uh, for the skin. Does it kind of stop it from curling up or just a little bit? Yeah, a well? little bit, but yeah. So, I'm going to fry that. Can you do this dish with mackerel, uh, Danny? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, no. <laughs> well, Viege, Viege can be go, with, go with anything, can it, really? Chicken as well, if anybody's got... Yes, absolutely. You know, the it's weather's a, it's actually kind of good this weekend. Yeah, it's actually like a, a, a warm dressing, really. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, skin first. The sink in the back there, if you want to wash your hands. There you go. Yeah. There you go. All right. Now, always skin first. Yeah, and I want to give a, a, a nice uh, bit of crisp to the skin, which is, yeah. uh, which is uh, really nice. So, potato. Oh, excuse me. May I skin it? I'm going to take the shallots, and you're just going to um, basically soften them down with some olive oil, because the, uh, the basic sauce for this is made out of olive oil. Yeah, correct. There. There's a base. There you go. Okay, that's fine. Now, do you want some butter in there? I will. Because I know Frenchmen, they like yes, butter. Yes, I will put some butter in there. Yeah. Not right now because I don't want the butter to burn. There you go. Okay. Well. Right. Great so this is so this is from your restaurant or this kind of dish? I suppose not really from the restaurant, but inspiration for this dish. Where does it come from? Well, it's uh, it's really a kind of a, a French home cooking, yeah. uh, brasserie home cooking relation. You know. Would that be from your new book then? That would be from my new book. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, James. Yes. Yeah, which yeah, exactly. just uh, came out. So. Uh, I'm very excited, very happy, and a bit nervous in the same time, but... Uh, yeah? Yeah. Because it's your first book? It is my first book, James, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah. And what kind of... Well, how would you define brasserie cooking, then? Well, uh, I define that at different region, obviously. So, brasserie, for me, borrow, borrowed recipe from regional yeah. places, and in the same time, kind of speciality, which was passed out from grandma to mother to daughter, yeah. uh, very much so, and, and adapted them within a brasserie. And that's why when you go to, to France in different regions, you can find this beautiful recipe within brasserie, which are, are regional. Yeah. And uh, so there's a relation like home, country, and etc. So which is nice. So and that's why... And that's French cooking then, because you've got so many different what, regions in France. Oh, completely, yeah. so many different style of dishes. Yeah. You know, take Nichois, for instance, it's very different, you know, the further down the coast you go as opposed to... Further north. It is, yes. Yeah. And, uh, and actually, it's funny because every kind of even neighbor town claims to have the right recipe or the best recipe. Uh, so there's always this kind of competition between town as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, it's quite interesting. So where would this dish originate from? Or is this one of your, your mother's? This one would be Mediterranean, but would yeah. be an accent of uh, my great aunt and my mum, which uh, did inspire me to cook when I was young. So exactly. I met his mother last week. I've never seen anybody so petrified. This was at your wedding. <laughs> it was in my wedding, yes. Your wedding, yeah? Yes, correct. You were running yeah. around like a little puppy dog, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Uh, and yeah. the, the biggest, biggest wedding cake in the world, I think, I'd probably say. Uh, yeah, well, the reason behind that is because uh, Claire originally is half Italian and, she, and half English, and I wanted to su surprise her, and my pastry chef made... Uh, a kind of mini copy of the Coliseum because they are from Rome originally. Oh, was it? I thought it looked like Fulham football. <laughs> 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 could, she was massive, I'll, I know. I had a bit to drink by then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just make the Coliseum out of cake. <laughs> 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 she generally looked like a football club. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was kind of, uh, you know, a way of, uh, of marking a little bit the origin. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it, was, it was very nice. Right, so these potatoes, you, you cook these slightly... So we cook slightly with a little bit of fennel and just... You can put some herbs in it, you can put... Uh, it's just to flavour a little bit... We uh, don't use the fennel, it's no, just to flavour, yeah? So that's why I use the stalk of it. Right. 
So now the potato has been blanched. I keep the skin on. I prefer the skin. So while the potato like is going, remember if you'd like to send us a question, the show, I think I like call the this number. That's 0876 so. 41 41 41. Calls, remember, cost 10p a minute from BT uh, Landline. Mobiles and other networks may vary. And a few of you to put your question to us live a little later on. And don't forget you find Daniel's recipe, along with all the other studio recipes from today's show, on our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen. Right. Yep. Lime's gone in there. So that's cool. vierge, nice. basically. It's just basically shallot, lime, or lemon. Yeah. Um, some people put, you can put vinegar in, I've seen it before. Some really good quality olive oil. And yeah. uh, the tomatoes go in just as it starts to warm up and then chopped herb. Yes. Um, right. So yeah, and you warm it up slightly. Yeah. Yeah, now, you've blanched the... The, have you got the pancetta there, or what have you, what have you no, got? No, our pancetta has been blanched, cut, been blanched. The reason I blanched it a little bit, sometimes it can be a touch salty. Right. And uh, so it will take a little bit out of the salt, and sometimes it, some pancetta is fatty as well, and some people don't actually take that a little bit as well. It's a good way, if you want to do your potatoes with bacon and stuff, to blanch it like that, isn't it? Because it's, um, yeah, and, it's and, and, and get it really crisp. And it crisp and very nicely too, yeah, correct. Right. Yeah. Very nice. Now, those people who, who haven't been... To uh, your restaurant, yes, it's uh, it's a big restaurant, restaurant and hotel. Yeah, it's a big restaurant. We can take a lot of covers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But wine uh, is um, kind of a big theme in there. Uh, the reason that's called a vineyard, actually, uh, it's because there's not vineyard around, but it's because the owner owns vineyards in California. So he based himself on a on a Californian house, really. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, and the reason here yeah, we've got massive. Massive wine is, yeah. uh, and obviously Sir, Sir Peter Michael makes wine, so yeah. uh, that makes sense. Now this is the key to cooking fish properly. So I like basically turn it once. That's it. Yeah, cook on the skin. Yeah, yeah. that's one. Right. So then we go with the bacon, and then do you want? Do you want me to finish off this fish for you? Yeah, if you want, that'd be lovely. Yeah. Uh, with butter, if you see. Yeah, this is yeah. why me and you are good mates, you see. Yes, because we love butter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's a fundamental part of, um, of cooking in France, isn't it, really? Yeah, we use, uh, we use a lot of butter, but uh, it doesn't mean necessarily in, in massive famine, but uh, I mean, it gives some kind of uh, colourful, nutty flavour to things as well. It's yeah. not, uh, and well, it's good. I like butter too, you know. Yeah. I'm a bit like you for that, that's correct. Yeah. You're looking a bit intense there, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to work out, so what have you done? Have you put the butter in? So we so put a touch of butter, down. so we cut the fish on, on the skin first. We yeah. get a nice crispiness, golden colour around, flick it over to finish cooking, and uh, put a, a drop of butter in the oil and, and just finish it a little bit, giving a no ah. lovely, nice, uh, nutty flavour. It should be nice. Pat's trying to figure out how much this dish is going to cost. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it already, straight away. You'll see it next week. The battles that I have, you see. It's more than £3.49. Yeah, it's more than, than £3.49. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But if it's, if it's a farm one, it's, uh, it's cheaper, so it's yeah. more affordable. So you, you, can, uh, you can almost do a, a dish for that, no? Right. Sweep on a day, you said, no? A day. £3.49. A day. Yeah. A day. yeah. <laughs> uh, I take my hat off because there uh, are guys to do so many. Uh, gosh, <laughs> yeah. No, they are the hardest working crew, I think. I'll yeah, I'm make. sure. Touch of balsamic vinegar in here? A little bit, yes. I like yeah. a little bit of touch of acidity and right. sweetness to it. So we need it there. With that. But the idea of this sauce vierge, like I said, it goes well with any barbecue meats or anything like that, chicken. Chicken but as well, yeah. It's, it's, it's almost a, it's a dressing, really, yeah. isn't it? But you can mix and match the herbs. It doesn't have to be parsley. So no, you can put chervil, which uh, is an herb which I love, yeah. particularly. You can put chive, you can put basil. You can Tarragon's put, nice in there. You as can well. put tarragon, yes. Yeah. But, uh, right, we're ready to. Uh, okay, uh, we're ready. To go when you are. Yeah. So the fish is cooked, literally just turn it over once like that. Yeah. I'll lose that out of the way. Right up. So the fennel's just gone into the potatoes just, to, just for flavour, that's it. Yeah. yeah, 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 you can put the different herb as well. You can crush your garlic in it. Yeah. And uh, right, let's just finish this. Okay, spoon for them. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you when you are. You can smell it, huh? Yeah. Now this to me would be sort of French brasserie food, that and a bit of steak. Yeah, 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 yeah no, it's yeah. completely uh, things people can relate to, huh? I think. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that was uh, the main focus for, for the book as well, and uh, it's food people could, uh, could relate to. Yeah. You know. There you go. And you can have that, the idea of that sauce, as soon as you add the tomatoes, don't heat it up anymore. 
uh, because it other, otherwise it starts to colour the sauce too much. So yeah, that's right. Just yeah. warm it up and then that's it. Really. Don't boil okay. it. And add a small drop of that. Looks delicious. Right. Don't forget, this is from Daniel's new book. So what's the name of the dish again? It's called uh, uh, Filet of Sea Bass, pan fried, served with uh, uh, sauté potatoes, pancetta, spring onion, sauce vierge. Easy as that. Cool, right. Oh, thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> you get to dive into this. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, do you know what? This could be this could be a heavenly dish for me, I've yeah. got to say. Mm. Well, <gasps> breakfast, dive in. Is it really bad that I don't eat the skin? I know you've cooked it to perfection. Oh, you can on the corner, try it, I promise. Oh, there we go. But I'm, not, I'm not massively no, into the whole the skin bit. I'm just gonna go there. No, even when it's crispy, I'd, I'm not into the skin. Oh. But I'm sea bass, you sea bass, any fish really with this, salmon, anything like that would work really you, well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you can do salmon. Sea bream, I love sea bream yeah. actually with that as well. Yeah, really chicken nice because sea bream, really nice, yeah. sea bream pancetta is a kind of nice <laughs> association. <laughs> Oh Macro, very good actually. <laughs> Macro, very that, good. You do not trust me to pat it. <laughs> no, no, exactly. <laughs> I know you're like running too well. You just keep eating it. What do you think? That's absolutely beautiful. That sauce vierge is gorgeous. Yeah, and the touch of balsamic vinegar really works. Yeah, yeah, it gives you a awesome. touch of uh, acidity yeah. for the richness of the dish. And, and that vierge is so simple to make. Yeah. Yeah. Should, yeah, yeah. I didn't realise that you didn't have to co uh, continue cooking the herbs afterwards. I thought. I Happy with that, that you But you need to keep the flavour is dispersed quick, yeah. straight away, keep the freshness, keep the colour. Mm. Jason? sometimes people swing too Perfect. much and the herbs mm. become brown. Yeah. Yeah. I like the way he calls it home cooking. Mm. Home cooking. I can't remember yeah. that in Skegness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, we need some wine to go with this. We sent our wine expert Tim Atkin to Cheshire this week. So what did you choose to go with Daniel's beautiful bass? I've come to Crew Hall, former residents of the Crew family, and I'm heading into the town of the same name to find some great wines to go with this week's dishes. <laughs> Daniel, your sea bass, fennel and spring onion dish is appealingly subtle, so I'm after a wine that will complement it rather than compete with it. If we're in a French mood, you might choose something like this Creuse Hermitage made from Marsan, but because of the sauce vierge, I want something with a Mediterranean twist. The wine I've chosen is a 2010 Falangina. Italy is much better known for its red wines, things like Chianti, Barolo and Valpolicella than it is for its whites. But that's changing thanks to grape varieties like Falangina. It's one of hundreds of local grape varieties that are only grown in Italy and nowhere else. This one comes from Naples, on the toe of Italy's boot heel, and it's absolutely delicious. On the nose, this is wonderfully aromatic with notes of aniseed and spice that go really nicely with the fennel in the dish. On the palate, there are flavours of citrus fruit, pear, green olive, and that fennel again. The acidity in this wine works really nicely with the lime and the tomatoes and the sauce vierge. It's subtle enough to partner the sea bass, but also works well with the pancetta and the potatoes. Daniel, who needs Pinot Grigio when you can drink Falangina? You've just got to remember how to pronounce it. Yes. Falangina, what Falangina. do you reckon? I think uh, it's very fresh. It brings the touch of acidity you need for that dish. Good balance, I think it's really nice. I think under six yeah. pounds, a bit of a very bargain. Nice. I never tried that one before. Yeah, yeah it's uh, really lovely. Yeah. Girls are just happy. Look at that. <laughs> Jason hasn't managed to taste any of the fish, but there you go. No, no, but the yeah. wine's good. Yeah, the wine's good. <laughs> Girls, what do you reckon to the dish? Absolutely lovely, and the sauce is gorgeous. Mm. Yeah. It's really fresh it's on top. It's really, really lovely. That's really the bit nice, I made. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 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 well, you can join us here at the Chef's Hill sometime in the series. All you have to do is write to us with your name, address, and most importantly, a daytime phone number. Our address is Saturday Kitchen, PO Box 3188, SE11 4XS. So get writing. And don't forget to put a stamp on your envelopes, please. Later on, Jason, at the end of the table, has something Spanish inspired to show us. What is it again? It's uh, roasted baby uh, squid, chorizo. I'll get out in a minute. Start again. Triplos, <laughs> yeah. with uh, chicken thigh, pipirard, uh, and a few baby herbs. There you go. Uh, first, let's continue our seafood odyssey with Mr. Rick Stein. Now, he's in Australia today, and he's taking a break from cooking to enjoy a spot of fishing, Aussie style.
Ah, that beach. You know that expression, life's a beach? Well, whenever I hear that, that's the beach I think about. And also I think about people like Sally Jennings that have to be on that beach. Beautiful, lovely, blonde, bubbly Australian girls. Oh, that's a typically male.